I love photographing the small towns of Oklahoma. In fact, it's become an obsession. When I return to my home state, I go to as many towns as I can and walk around snapping photos, which always leads to interactions with curious locals. There aren't many tourists in small town Oklahoma, so I attract a lot of attention from locals who want to show me their town, tell me about their lives, and pose for photos. Oh. My name is Jeff Bell. I'm a photography enthusiast who's visited hundreds of towns in the Sooner State. These are my top 10 most photogenic towns in Oklahoma. Number 10 on the list is Gate, a thriving metropolis of 60 people at the entrance of the Panhandle. The buildings on Main Street are mostly abandoned. However, they are all covered in murals and paintings. The colorful street art gives new life to the buildings. As you enter town, you see this cool stagecoach mural, and there are little artistic details all around town. There's a cute cafe in town which was closed when I visited, but you know on Friday night, this place has to be packed, since it is the only place to eat for miles. The high plains around Gate are starkly beautiful, with rolling hills covered in sagebrush, cactus, and yucca. Gate isn't on the main road, but if you're passing through the panhandle, it's worth a short detour to see this photogenic little town. Number 9 on the list is my hometown of Woodward. With a population of 12,120, Woodward has several cool buildings on Main Street, including a photogenic vintage theater that lights up at night. Woodward earns bonus points for the Quirky Creationist Park, which features the Ten Commandments, a T-Rex statue, an Americanosaurus, or whatever the heck that is, and Jesus riding a Stegosaurus. Whoever came up with that idea must have got some good stuff from the dispensary. Speaking of which, Woodward is an oil and railroad town with a rough edge to it. There are more bars, liquor stores, and dispensaries than churches, and there are a f ton of churches. Woodward also has three grain elevators, and I just love grain elevators, the skyscrapers of the plains. There's always something going on at the fairgrounds, and if you like people watching, well, let's just say you'll find some interesting characters out there. Speaking of events, number eight on our list goes to Beaver, in large part due to the World Cow Chip Throwing Festival they have every year. In case you don't know, when a cow takes a wet poop in the field, it bakes in the hot summer sun and forms a hard disc which is called a cow chip. Country folk throw them for distance and accuracy at the festival in Beaver, and it was one of the most photogenic festivals I've seen in Oklahoma. Classic brick buildings line the main street in Beaver, and just outside of town is the beautiful Beaver Dunes State Park. The combination of quirky festivals, natural beauty, and preserved downtown earns Beaver a spot on my list. At number 7 on the list is Thomas, a small town of 1,100 people that's just a wholesome, all-American town. Thomas has a chill vibe. It feels like the kind of place where you could sit on your porch and drink sweet tea with your neighbor, go to church every Sunday, and vote straight Republican. I mean, look at this eatery. You just know you can get a delicious, greasy burger at that place. You know they don't serve that beyond fake meat. And check out the Night Owl Inn. You gotta love that vintage sign. And like Woodward, Thomas has three grain elevators, and this one here is surrounded by junk and rail yards. You know you can make some great photos there. Number six is Snyder, a town of 1,390 in the Wichita Mountains of Southwest Oklahoma. When I was photographing the vintage theaters and defunct service stations in Snyder, a man approached me and said, hey, if you wanna know about the buildings in this town, you need to go in that shop over there and ask for AJ. And so I did. Inside the Toma Discount Grocery, I met a man named AJ who was like a walking library. He asked where I was from, and when I said Woodward, he scoffed. You only think you had a deadly tornado. He reached under the counter and pulled out a folder with a bunch of photos from the deadly Snyder tornado, which killed about as many people as the one from Woodward. For the next hour, we chatted in between customers and he told me all about the history of the town. Meeting AJ was one of the highlights of my travels in Oklahoma. Snyder is a mix of dilapidated buildings and photogenic decay and fixed up downtown facades. Snyder gets bonus points for its proximity to the spectacular Wichita Mountains, which we will talk about more later on. Number five on the list is Cordell, which has an absolutely beautiful downtown. Look at this courthouse in the middle of the town square. Behind it we have the water tower with the town name on it, and all around are red brick buildings with interesting details. Cordell, with a population of 2,768, and it looks like a movie set. When I walked around the town, I met several interesting people, including the owner of the antique shop, who rocks a killer stash. And there was a wall went down the middle of it, and this side was a hardware store, and this side was a restaurant. Cordell has everything you could want in a small town. Look, you got a flea market where you can buy one bowling pin. Cordell has a colorful mural, has a vintage theater, and it has some racist flags, which, you know, add to the small town character. 
You really have to get out and explore these small towns by foot to really appreciate them. It's just not the same when you drive by in a car. Like look at this bank, the tile work that you have down there. And look at the word Undertaker fading here on this building. Pretty cool, eh? Outside of downtown, you have an all-American diner and scenes like this that just scream Americana. Number four on our list is Guthrie with a population of 11,029. Guthrie is a National Historic Landmark District and has by far the best collection of buildings in the most beautiful town center in Oklahoma. Just look at the detail on these buildings. It looks like something from Europe and not Oklahoma. Check out the old school signage on these buildings too. How charming is that? The main street is paved with red bricks and there's preserved tile work in many of the storefronts. This cool building looks like it belongs in a Wes Anderson movie. Outside of downtown, there are several impressive structures, like the County Courthouse, Masonic Lodge, and Oklahoma Territorial Museum. Guthrie is just north of Oklahoma City, not far from the three interstate highways that converge in the middle of the state. It is well worth a detour if you're in the area. Number three on our list is Winoka, with a population of 716. The most beautiful building in town is the Santa Fe Rail Depot, made up of red bricks with decorative details and archways. The train rumbles through town a few times an hour and is a major feature of the city. In fact, the high school mascot is the Railroaders. Winoka has several beautiful buildings, including this cute library, the red brick city hall, and this little white church. Most of the downtown buildings are abandoned and have a time-worn feel. Winoka makes the top three due to the surrounding area. Winoka is the gateway to the Little Sahara State Park, a 1,600-acre expanse of rolling sand dunes. It's also near the Cimarron River and the Red Earth Badlands of the Gloss Mountains. And speaking of mountains, number two on my list is Medicine Park, a mountain town in Oklahoma, which I bet you didn't even know existed. Medicine Park, with a population of 428, stretches along the banks of the Medicine Creek and features several bars, cabins, hotels, and restaurants. It's a tourist town in Oklahoma that looks like it belongs in Colorado. There's a swimming hole in the center of town and a few trails that lead to sweeping views of the town and nearby Lake Latonka. The town is pretty quiet during the week, but it gets pretty wild on the weekends. People come in from Lawton to drink at the bars, and you'll meet a lot of interesting characters if you go out at night. Oh, my dog is my best good dog. Almost all the buildings in town have charm and style, and a lot of the older buildings are made out of round stones and bricks. Medicine Park is the gateway town to the Wichita Mountains National Wildlife Refuge. A beautiful park with hiking trails and scenic drives that would hold its own in the national park system. The rugged peaks of the Wichita Mountains are filled with wildlife. If you're ever in the area, make a trip to Medicine Park in the Wichita Mountains and you can thank me later. Before we get to number one, a couple of quick notes. You might notice a heavy bias towards Western Oklahoma in this list. Let me know the towns in Eastern Oklahoma or other towns I've missed. I'll try to check them out in the future and update my list. Also, all the photos and videos you've seen so far in this video are my original work. If you like what you've seen and would like to support me, you know what to do. Number one is Freedom, with a population of 176 people. Freedom has a Wild West vibe because all the buildings on Main have a wooden facade and they look like something out of a John Wayne film set. Freedom really has it all. Murals that just scream hashtag murica, cute churches, a grain elevator in the center of town, and an abandoned hotel that looks like you could hitch up a horse outside. Freedom has vintage signs, a railroad car, waving American flags, and a bank that looks like something Jesse James would rob. You'll even find political art in whatever the heck this is. Freedom's Wild West vibes and natural setting are at the top spot on my list. The Cimarron River flows along the base of Red Earth Cliffs just south of town. The landscapes around Freedom are gorgeous, with Red Earth Badlands, Alabaster Caverns, and Gypsum Cat Mesas called the Gloss Mountains to the south. The Gloss Mountains look like they belong in Utah and are one of several out-of-place geographical areas in Oklahoma, which you can learn more about right here. 